Okay. Hopefully I am not going to be bundled up this way for the entire class. I closed all the windows, but trees are blowing down. That is how windy it is in Encinitas. Okay. Let's bring the hands together. Stand tall. If you feel too wiggly with your feet together, just separate them hip width. On your next exhale, lower the arms by your side. Now circle the arms to reach up for the inhale. Bring the hands to prayer again for your exhale and bring your right knee in to meet your forearm if you can. Put down, arms up for an inhale, and the other side for an exhale. We'll do this a few times. Inhale, reach up. So it's kind of like an ab crunch. As you're bringing the knee in, think about your other leg. Bottom leg straight. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, curl it in. This is high as it could go. A lot of hip flexor strength required also. Inhale. Exhale, right knee in. Inhale. And last time, left knee in. Exhale. Inhale, reach up. And we'll fold forward for the exhale. From halfway up, inhale. Just step to plank for the exhale. If the hands are under the shoulders or maybe an inch in front of. If you don't want to keep your knees lifted, just put your knees on the floor, no big deal. Just take two more breaths here. Belly in so that you feel lifted in your hips. There should be no back pain. Press the downward dog for the exhale. A lot of wiggling can be done here. So we start to assess what are the physical ailments of the day. Okay, let's start walking feet forward toward hands. When you get there, we'll just ride halfway for an inhale. Head toward shin bones for the exhale. Rise all the way up, inhale. Hands to prayer at the chest, right knee up, exhale. Inhale, reach up, try not to arch. So we curl in, left knee rises, exhale. You're not arching at all here. But when we lower the foot and lift the arms, we don't want to splay the ribs. One more time, each side. So that thinking of it that way makes the inhale posture difficult. Next exhale, let's fold forward. And halfway up, inhale. We'll step to plank again. Exhale. And either stay like you did last time, or bring your right knee to your right elbow, and then step to your plank, and left knee to left elbow, to plank. Just alternate at your pace. Try not to wiggle between your right and left sides. So the hips will just stay put. They'll stay facing down. And this means that the leg that stays on the floor has to be extra strong. The next time you're finished with your left side, just press the downward dog and use that as a resting place. If it's not restful, just do something else that is. We'll walk the feet forward toward the hands again. When they get close, come halfway up, inhale. Fold forward, drop the head, exhale. Rise up, inhale. And we'll bring the right knee in, but we're going to keep it lifted this time. So it's just as high as it could go with the left leg being straight. 
When you can, reach the arms up. Drop the right hip one inch and bring the right knee higher. So we're not just leaning in order to get the knee up. We're using the right hip flexors a lot. Ooh, I'm starting to fall over. Okay, when you're ready to exhale, just lower the foot, lower the arm, and we'll try the other side. We'll bring the left knee in. You might even want to hold your knee for a moment, pull the knee in higher, then try to keep it at that new height. When you can, reach the arms up. And be cognizant of the tendency for you to lean to the right. And when you lean to the right, you're lifting your left hip. So drop your hip. Just work these left hip flexors to bring your knee in a little closer. Okay, let's lower the foot, lower the arms. And just roll the shoulders up by your ears for an inhale. Back and down for the exhale. Circle hey, the arms. It's, um, oh, yeah. What'd you say? Oh, your camera disappeared. It's fine now. Okay, we're back. Good. Reach the arms up for an inhale and fold, exhale. Halfway up, inhale. This time to chaturanga for the exhale. Inhale, upward facing, circle the shoulders. Downward facing, exhale. And we'll stay here for a few breaths. I'm going to take off some layers because planks are hard and those vertical planks are also hard. Let's take two more breaths. Okay, start to walk your feet forward toward your hands. We'll inhale halfway. And fold, exhale. Let's come halfway up again and come to fingertips, maybe 12 inches in front of your toes. So your fingers are just underneath your shoulders. We'll lift the right leg out to the right side and bend the knees so you're kicking yourself in the butt. And that right knee is just facing to the side, uh, the thigh about hip height. Not such a huge deal. Let's try to straighten the leg again. Now it's harder. So if it's too much, bend the knee again. Otherwise, reach through your right heel. Try to keep it at the same height you had when your knee was bent. And let's lower that right foot to the floor. And we'll just try the other side. We'll lift the left leg up. And we'll bend the knee so we kick ourselves in the butt. We get situated here. You could even look at your knee to see, is it about hip height? And consider extending the leg out. You will feel your outer glutes working like mad on both legs. Take two more breaths. Let's lower that foot down. Come to an inhale, chest forward, and just step back, chaturanga. Exhale. Inhale for upward facing. Exhale for downward facing. Lift the right leg up to the ceiling. Kick yourself in the butt. And take the knee out to the side again. So it's just like what you did moments before, but now in a down dog instead of a forward bend. Consider extending your right leg out to the side so you can actually see an L shape with your legs. Reach through that right heel if you are extending the leg. And bend the knee, lift the knee up to the ceiling again. That's so much easier than what you just did. And lower the foot down. And we'll try the other side. Left leg floats up. That's just your three-legged dog, nice and simple. Bend the knee and take the knee out to the side. Now it is very difficult. Now we are fighting gravity at every second of the way. Extend the leg out if you want. It's interesting how much harder this side is for me than the first side. Don't know why that is. I will have to think about it. Okay, we'll bend the knee again. 
We'll lift it up toward the ceiling again. Straighten the leg and lower the foot to a nice normal downward drop. And by now your outer glutes should be somewhat on fire. Let's just lift the right leg high for an inhale and step to the hands. Exhale. Warrior two. Rise up. We'll straighten that front leg for an inhale. Bend it for an exhale. And just twice more like that. Once more. Good. Simple enough. Let's just straighten that right leg, pivot on the feet, and exhale to bend the left leg. There's your warrior two. Inhale to straighten the left leg. Exhale to bend. Inhale to straighten. Exhale to bend. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Okay. Straighten the left leg. Pivot around to the first side again. Bend into the right leg. Parshwakanasana. Either elbow to the thigh or right hand to the floor or any other version that you want. We will stay for five breaths. That's one, two, three, and notice how easy it is to get complacent in this pose, to just kind of hang out and wait for me to say, we're done. And there's five. Let's rise up on an inhale, straighten the leg, pivot around, find your warrior two stance, and your Parshwa Kanasana side two. So we want that left hip to move under the whole time. That's one. Keep reaching with that top arm. Two. Keep pressing the outer edge of the right foot down. Three. Really, there's so much happening in this pose that our mind doesn't have the capacity to wander too much. Unless you're not thinking about the pose. All right, let's rise up. Okay, pivot around to side one again. This time, just trying pose. Reach out and in. And it could be a pretty high up position if your hamstrings feel right. Or you can start sliding that right hand lower and lower on the leg. I feel tight in the waist, so I'm going to reach the top arm over the ear, like we did in Parshvakarasana. You do not have to do that, but it is a variation that is quite lovely. Next inhale, we'll rise up and just pivot over to the other side. So you're used to doing warrior ones as part of your Surya Namaskar in order to warm up the hips. Today we did instead those little gnarly knee out to the side things or leg out to the side things. So your hips might feel different in these poses at this point because you had a different situation to get you here. Let's rise up on an inhale. And we'll pivot around. Vinyasa, step back, chaturanga, exhale. Okay. Let's come into our tabletop. Then lower to the elbows. Measure it out so you know your elbows are not too wide. And interlace the fingers. So it's like dolphin setup. And we'll just go from dolphin setup with our knees down. Inhale, curl into your back bend. Exhale, round yourself into your forward bend. Do this a few times. It's essentially your cat cow, but with the edge of your hand pushing and pulling on the ground. You take one more like this. You'll notice as you arch, your chest dips down and then forward. Okay, let's meet in neutral for a moment. 
and bring the knees together. So your elbows are wide, but your knees are, are touching. And lift your right leg up with the knee bent, like your toes are going to touch the ceiling. And that'll be our arch. On your exhale, bring your right knee toward your right elbow, even though it's on the ground. Maybe tricep even you can get to. Inhale the right leg up again toward the ceiling. Exhale, curl it in, maybe touch even your armpit. Let's just do that one more time. See if your edge of hand can help you create the shapes. And let's lower the right knee to meet the left knee so that we can do the other leg. So lift the left toes toward the ceiling. And when you're ready to exhale, curl it in. Push the floor away with the edge of your hand. When you're ready to inhale, the edge of your hand is going to essentially drag your chest forward. So just do this a few times at your pace. There is a lot happening. So much so that the mind can't really wander off the mat. Okay. So after your next time, we'll just lower the knee to meet the other knee. Ooh, hello triceps. And let's come to just normal downward dog for a few breaths of rest. Okay, right leg up high, inhale. Step forward, exhale. Warrior one. So let's go for steeple mudra. Three breaths. So the pointer finger just straight up to the ceiling. You can look at it if you want. If it hurts your neck, just look forward. Try to get the pinky edge of the hand to touch the other hand. Okay, switch your grip, interlace behind the back. We'll try to keep the legs the same. Reach your knuckles down the back leg, chest open. Okay, we'll keep the legs the same. Hands to prayer in front of the chest. I know that your right glutes and hamstring at this point are feeling a bit of a burden. Let's just take a few more breaths here. And we'll turn this into a twisted lunge. So lift the back heel and spin the knee to face down. Then bring your left elbow outside your right thigh. You can separate your hands in order to get your left arm further along in that twist. And once you feel like you've got your hands and arms situated, spin your back heel down again. So it becomes, again, your warrior one leg position. This is going to require you to push your right knee into your arm more. Your right knee has to push to the right. Okay, slowly unwind and just step back, vinyasa, holy moly. We'll try to do all that on side two. So we'll make it left foot forward, warrior one, steeple mudra. My right hip flexors are so tight that this is very hard to do. But to make it a little easier, I'm going to try to stretch my right arm a little higher. Freeze up some space. Good, let's interlace fingers behind the back. Roll the shoulders open. Reach your knuckles down. If you feel like it's really hard to square yourself here, you could bring the outer edge, or not the outer edge, what is this, the back of your left hand against the outer right side so that your arms are kind of hooked on the back leg and you get a little extra square that way. Okay, hands to prayer. 
Keep that back leg straight. Lift the chest up into your thumbs. Okay, to take it into the twist, we'll lift the back heel. That just frees us up to get that right arm further over the leg. You could keep the heel down the whole time. I find that I can get much deeper in the twist if I just lift the heel while processing the arms. Carrie, bring your thumbs a little closer to your chest. Maybe two more inches. Good. Then the top hand can push down more. It'll be a little bit more of a straight shot. Okay, let's slowly unwind. And vinyasa. So theoretically, you feel this in your hips quite a bit. Some of you might be built in such a way that this is no big deal to you. <laughs> okay, let's come to hands and knees again. We'll do that same measuring for dolphin. This time we're gonna go up to headstand and I'll show you um, what we're gonna do up there so that you don't have to worry about seeing your screen or even listening to me. So get up however you want to, and we'll keep one leg up there. And we're just going to bring the other knee in, kind of like what we did when we were standing at the very beginning of class. And then that other leg will go up, and it'll train. And we're going to try to hit the bottom leg as close as we can to the chest without falling into a child's pose. So that's all. Let's do that a few times. Tanya, you don't have to come down, but just next time, I think your elbows are too close. And Carrie, your knee can go way lower than you think. Keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> And see if you can bring it up from there. Yes, you can recover from there. Good. All right. So after you've done sides equally, then just find your child's pose and rest. Good. And then the fun part is that we're going to do it with both legs at the same time. So you'll be curling into a little ball. Some of you, your knees are going to touch your arms. The hardest part is getting up again in that bottom range. So just go slow and maybe err on the side of not going down too far. But if you go down too far and you can't get up again, you're not going to fall into an uncomfortable position. You'll wind up in child's pose. So just go as low as you can. I did not touch on that one, but maybe in a few more, my abs will be on a little bit better. So far, not yet. Just take like between two and five curls. One of the tricks for rising up again is push the edge of your foot into the other foot. Good, and come down when you're ready. Rest is either child pose or kneeling. Okay, and we'll meet in Downward Dog. Let's bring the right leg up high for an inhale. 
Step to the hands, exhale. And let's find that prayer twist like we did before. So let's just right leg front. We hook our left arm over the right thigh. And let's keep our back heel up for an extra couple breaths here. Potentially extend your left hand to the floor, right hand to the ceiling. If your left hand's on the floor, reach your right hand over your ear. And let's all now lower that left heel down. So this is Parvrita, Parshvakanasana, full pose. We're pushing the right knee into that left arm. And that's going to help twist us. Okay, let's unravel. Core turn to the left. Prasarata D. Reach for the big toes. Inhale. Fold head down. Exhale. If your head comes down too easily, just walk your feet a little closer together. Okay, let's come up halfway. Release the hands so they're under your shoulders. We'll just propel ourselves over to that right leg. The hands will move with you. And let's just lift the left leg up. And bend through the right leg, reach out with the left foot, walk the hands over, and transfer to the left foot. So the right leg is up. I'll just do this a few times. So your leg will, the bottom leg will be pushing through the floor in order to straighten and get you into that L shape of the legs. The hands are just assisting with your balance, but really your outer glutes are doing the majority of the work. They will feel a little bit like they are on fire. So after your next trip over to that left foot, we'll just come to that prasarta stance again so that we can walk our hands to the top of the mat and vinyasa. We'll do our parvrita parshvakanasana on the other side. Parvrita means whirling. Let's lift the left leg and step it forward. We'll find our prayer twist to start. So in this parvrita, this whirling, your torso is rotating up throughout the entirety of the torso. So it's not just us turning the head. We're not just turning the shoulders. There's this kind of barrel roll concept. So maybe that's enough for you, or you want your right hand down, left arm up, or maybe left arm over the ear. Then your waistline stretch is pretty awesome. And when you can, back heel to the floor. So it's essentially your warrior one legs, working like mad to keep hips square, Unravel. Quarter turn to the right. Prasarta A. Hands between the heels. Head down. Elbows just over the wrists. One of the common errors that folks have in not just this pose, but headstands too. Hands would be too close together. Elbows would be wide. Also, we see this in Urdhva Dhanurasana a lot. So err on the side of having your hands wide, then it'll be a little more manageable to keep your elbows over your wrists. Okay, let's straighten the arm. I'm just going to turn around so I can see you. We'll turn this into a goddess pose. So heels in, toes out, elbows to the inside of the knee, hands to the ankles. If this is too much for your hips, just put your hands on your thighs instead. You'll be up higher. It might be a little more forgiving. Not a lot more forgiving, though. 
Maybe shift a little side to side. Okay. Let's place the hands, walk them toward the top of the mat, vinyasa. So we'll attempt tripod headstand with the same one leg at a time thing that you did earlier, lowering the knee. But this time you have sort of a place to lower onto because there is an elbow. So we'll come up and we'll try to bring one knee to that arm. It may not touch, but it might. And then, the, of course, the fight is how do you get that leg up again? That's going to be your abs, your stubbornness, your fingers pushing down. Go as slow as you want. And if you get stuck and you can't get up again, it's not really that big of a deal. You'll be okay. Tanya, elbows in one more inch. <laughs> She's like, but I want to come down now. <laughs> okay, good. So come on down when you're even on both sides. And if you find that you get too much pressure on your neck if you're, when you're in tripod position, you can just do the other position that we did instead. It's this one, the interlaced grip. You're able to have your head just a tiny bit more off the ground. So if at any point in headstands your neck hurts, do this one. Interlace fingers. Okay, let's meet in downward dog. Shake out your head. Let's bring one foot forward. We're going to turn to face the long edge of the mat again. So whichever foot you want forward in order to line yourself up better for your camera, do that. And we'll find our samakhanasana. So hands are gonna be under our shoulders, holding us up as we let our feet slide apart. And there will be a, a point where the feet will not go any further. We'll hang out there for a sec and we'll just enjoy it. Feels nice in the inner thighs. Very clear where that point of uh, stopping is. All right, let's keep the heels on the floor, rotate the feet to face up, the kneecaps to face up. Walk the hands back 12 inches and start to lower yourself down. So your thighs are by your wrists and now you're in this sitting position with super wide legs. Let's bring the knuckles in, the elbows down. This is, Technically not Samakhanasana, but for most of us, this is as good as it's gonna get. And we just enjoy that. We pretend our legs are in a straight line. Okay, shake out your hands. Pigeon on the right side. So we'll just bend the knee and rotate in the hips. You can use your hands in any way to steer you to square hips. For today, I'm gonna to put my left forearm underneath the sole of my right foot and push my foot into the arm. Then I put my right hand out to the side a little bit and push down so that I am not falling onto the right hip. And then the chest can come toward the shin bone. Okay, rise up. We'll rock to that right hip so we can straighten the leg again. And let's find our Samakhanasana again. So the hands will come in front. And let's keep our toes up, our kneecaps up. And this time, let's try to keep our butt up. With your butt up, you are able to get more in a straight line. But it's going to require you pulling with your fingers and bringing your thighs closer to your forearm. Okay, slowly lower your butt 
down again. Maybe it landed in exactly the same place. Maybe you're a little bit straighter. Who knows? And let's go to the left side pigeon. So I was using my hand, my left hand, to help prevent me from falling onto the left hip. You could also wedge something under there. In a lot of classes, folks put blocks under there, but I think the block being a set height, it's too high. So it would be better if you had a towel if you want to wedge something, because then you can make it exactly the minimum required assistance. Okay, and let's rise up. We'll re straighten that left leg. We'll return to that Samakanasana healing, that sideways facing split. But we're going to turn it into a frog pose. So walk your feet in a little bit. Walk the hands forward and come down onto the knees. And you decide how far apart your knees are. We're going to flex the feet and have our shins parallel to each other. You could also think shins parallel to the short edge of your mat. Come down maybe to the forearms. So maybe one day your pelvis will be on the ground. Not mine, but maybe yours. Let's go back and forth just about an inch from the regular alignment. So instead of having the hips right in line with the knees, go one inch in front of the knees and one inch behind. And just see where is your sticky spot. Okay, yikes. There's no graceful way out of here. You can slide forward on your belly. I usually just prop myself up and then try to bring the knees in. But there's, there's no great way. And let's meet in downward dog and make sure that our legs are still attached to our bodies. Oh dog. Okay, let's walk the feet forward. And when they get there, just roll yourself up to standing. Right leg on top, Gomukhasana. So we'll cross as high on the thighs as possible. Then maybe your foot, right foot goes behind your ankle. You could do a prayer with your hands, or you can with your left arm under your right and either interlace your fingers or have your palms together. We'll squeeze the arms and legs. We'll drop our butt lower, lift our elbows higher. So this pose in itself is not horrible, but we're about to do it in a series of things that might test us a bit physically and mentally. So keep your balance and turn this into flying pigeon. So unwind your limbs, right ankle to lower left thigh. We'll bring our left hand to the hip our right hand to the pinky toe edge of the foot, stand first, so our right knee is just bent and the shin is in front of us. Make sure your left leg is straight and extend your right leg out to the side as far as it goes while your standing leg is straight. Because if you bend the standing leg, it is gonna be easier to get the right leg up, but that's not really the point. Let's bring that top leg forward. We'll bring the left hand then also onto the right foot. We'll push the foot into the hand. You can decide if you want your leg higher or not. We're gonna fold forward and attempt to bring our forehead toward our shin bone.
lift the head up again, rebend your right leg, and either take it to tree pose with your knee facing out to the side, or take it to half lotus pose with your knee facing down to the floor. And either one, you're gonna bring hands to prayer. If you're in half lotus, you don't want your foot to slide off, of course. So you need to drop your tailbone down more. It's very tempting to stick your butt out in half lotus. Um, just try not to. If you need your hand to help hold it up, no problem. Just take one more breath. Okay, let it go. Shake it out. So all of those poses on themselves are not so bad, but when we put it together in this never-ending sequence, whew, I'm tired. Okay, let's try the other side. So left leg on top. Take the time to cross high up, because if you don't cross high up, the ankle won't go behind the, or the foot won't go behind the ankle. And then we'll wrap right under left. The foot behind the ankle is not essential, but it does help you squeeze everything together. The more we squeeze in this pose, the nicer it feels when you let go. But lower, elbows higher. Okay, we'll turn it into flying pigeon. And if you feel like your balance is crazy, just hold on to something with your hair. You could even hold on to the floor in flying pigeon, but that won't work when we go up to some of those other things. Okay, left hand to pinky toe side of foot, right hand to the hip, first just stand up. So your right leg is working like mad to stand for you to go from bent to straight. Even just getting here was, was a trial. So don't change your standing leg, just extend the left leg out. You're pushing through the ball of the left foot. And if the leg is not straight today, just as you practice this, it will get more and more so. We'll bring the leg forward. The right hand will come to the arch side of the foot. And as you feel comfortable with your back, with your abdominal strength, you'll fold and bring your head toward your shin bone. Let's lift the head again. Let's bend that knee either to a tree pose or a half pose. Standing tall. If you're in tree, you have your foot on your thigh, make sure that your standing leg is very strong so your foot has something to anchor into. Okay, <laughs> we are done. Let's shake that out and face front again, if you face a different way. Inhale to reach up, fold forward, exhale. Halfway up, inhale, step or jump, chaturanga, exhale. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Take a few breaths here. Sort out anything that feels achy or tweaked or slightly off. Okay, so let's come to hands and knees again. We will attempt to lotus up our legs while we are, are uh, in a headstand. If that's not for you, just cross your legs any which way. Let's do it first from Badahasa A, interlaced fingers. So I'm gonna face this way. If you know how to do it, just go ahead up, no problem. If you've never done it before, you're gonna bring your right leg to your left thigh. Try to bend your left knee enough to get your right foot to the hip crease. 
Once your foot's in your hip crease, lift your right knee to the ceiling and whip that left leg around. Once you're in lotus or whatever crossing you want to do, bend at the hip and bring your knees toward your arms, any amount. So you're curling into a little ball and then lift your legs up again. We'll just do that a few times. And after you've decided about what your legs are going to do, the ab and balance situation will be the same. Harry, it looks like you've got a little bit too much ankle on your hip. Go a little more toward your toe with that, the bottom leg. Yeah, because every inch will, will matter there. And you'll have a little more wiggle room if you're by the toe more. Good, then you just got to get that right knee up out of the way. That's a, a tough aspect. Okay, cool. So come on down whenever you've done a few of these little curls. And let's meet on our butts. That's fun. We'll just sit here for a while. Oh. Let's bring the feet out. We'll hold on to the thighs and start to roll down. At some point, your arms are straight and you can't roll anymore. When that happens, let your feet lift off the ground so you wind up with your back down and use the power of the legs to lift you up again. And just try this a few times. So it's not a really big, uh, big movement, but it's just helping to figure out how the legs are pushing us up. So if that's going well, instead of holding your thighs, hold your shins. And then it's going to be a little more oomph. To get up. And if that's going well, then hold your ankles with your your shins crossed. So it's like almost like when we practice um, jumping through, and then just try it from there, rolling back, and then using the legs to get you up again. And I overshot, so I kind of fell down. But then it's a, an interesting place to balance where you figure out how are your legs propelling you. And if that's going well, maybe lotus up your legs and then hold the knees and do the same thing. I like to look at the belly to encourage the rounding of the back. And whenever you've had enough of such things, we're just going to meet in Baddha Konasana. Soles of the feet together, knees out to the side. Ah, lovely pose. Chest up for an inhale, and we'll fold forward for the exhale. Aiming the chest to the foot. Okay, and let's rise up. Ooh, either vinyasa or just go to downward dog. And let's attempt, for some of you, a lotus legs from Vanahasta C. Otherwise, try it again from A or whatever headstand you're doing. Um, and if lotus legs is not for you, go for the half or, let's see, I'll fix this way. Half lotus or something else. Even just being upside down with your legs symmetrical is a pretty big deal. So Vata has to see the 
forearms are parallel to each other. Again, the right leg comes in. And I'm just going to get the edge of the foot in that hip crease. So the, the tippy toes can point around that left thigh. And it's way harder to get into a lotus in this new headstand because you'll notice you can't wiggle quite as much. The, the foundation is more precarious. So the more open the hips, obviously the easier it would be because you whip your legs in. But if we're gonna do it slowly, and if, or if you're new to it, it's very hard. Nice, Tanya. Okay. Good. So let's return to our butts. Take your time of finishing up whatever you were you're in. Ooh. And let's go for either March Asana C or D. So yesterday we did C. That would be left leg straight, right leg bent, and you twist to the right. If you want D, you're going to put your left leg in half lotus, but not crazy far over the leg. It's just like the two inches of your toe is going to dangle over. No mucks. Then bend your right leg, then twist. So the only difference is you put your left foot into your half foot. The hug is possible. You could stay there or twist to a hook or bind around your shin for full pose. And Miss Tanya, push your knee to the right. You might want to bend your left elbow. It makes it a little easier to, to hook and have something to push into. Yeah. And we just need to get your armpit closer to your leg. <laughs> okay, let's get out of there. I know Mari D is like nobody's favorite, but um, but yeah, there it is. So let's try the other side. So your right leg will either stay straight or you'll put it in half lotus. And that would be the first decision you have to make. Then you bend your left leg so that the knee is somewhat over the ankle and we start to twist. And now you have another decision. Do you hug or do you hook? If you're gonna hook, you need to get as close to your armpit as possible before you make your second decision, which is what do you do with this forearm? If you can get your armpit close to your thigh, you can wrap around the shin. Okay, let's slowly get out of there. Hopefully you were breathing while you were there. And let's vinyasa. All right. So again, we'll try to lotus up our legs when we're upside down. You decide if you do a headstand or a pincha mayarasana. But if you're going pincha, it's not going to be a back bending pinch up. It's not going to be quite stanyasana either. So I would come up and kind of look maybe between the elbows. So I can feel a little more stack. Then the right leg bends in, just like you did from headstand. The knee has to get up and out of the way so that the second leg can come in. The faster you can do it, the more energy you have to channel into the balance itself. But it's a fine line. It takes years for your legs to be able to whip into it. 
So maybe you go a half lotus or you just work on uh, bending your knees in pincha and crossing your legs. Because that's something you're not used to. So it's going to throw off your balance. Nice, Kara. You had it there for a sec. <laughs> So, Carol, you look too stable. You're in a headstand, I could tell. So, Carol, get out of there and get your head off the ground. <laughs> I know I said you have a choice, but I'm rescinding what I said. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> So when I've been teaching you Pincha over the months, I've been telling you to reach with your leg. And now we get into the conundrum of I'm telling you to bend your legs. So you might fall. It's, it's very possible. Um, one of the easier ways, just uh, in case the, the left leg is not your favorite, if you lift your left leg first, your right leg can go Hang on, look, there we go. It can just bend right into the spot. So if you have not been trying it that way, try it that way. So the left leg is your lifted leg first. Then your right leg will just bend right into the hip crease. Carol, what's going on over there? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, she's sitting there. <laughs> she's just waiting for this to be done. <laughs> All right. Well, we will change gears. So you are in luck. All right. So I'm just having you play with this because um, we've been getting really solid in our pinches. Let's sit in Virasana while I jibber jabber about it. So we've been getting solid in our pincha, but pincha is not the be all end all. There are a thousand things that come after. Um, so you know how long it took us to get to solid pinchas. It's going to be that much of a journey to get past as well. Let's come down toward the elbows. And every inch you go down, you might have to re-tuck your tailbone. Literally lift your butt off the ground, scoop, and then put your butt down again. And you'll see as you do that action, the inside edges of your knees move up toward the ceiling. Okay. Let us return to our hands, but we'll keep our hands behind us so that they're facing our feet and lift the hips way off the ground for this variation on Purvottanasana that will get into your chest, armpits, your legs are going to work like mad to get your hips up. Okay, and come on down, bring the hands in front of you, and step back, either vinyasa or go straight to downward dog. Bring the right foot in front, left knee down and back, Anjaneyasana. So I think that we are done with um, lotus for the most part. We'll do one much, much later on, but not as a super big deal. So if you don't like lotus, now relax a little bit. <sighs> okay. So let's reach back for the pinky toe side of the foot. A very awkward position. We're not going to turn it into a cane, pigeon, anything, but just feel what's, what this is like. Your chest is open, you might feel a little bit twisted, it's not that comfortable, but just, you know, breathe in this position because one day this will be a place to frequent. 
Okay, change your grip so you're holding the inside of the foot. Bend your elbow, and if possible, slide your forearm along the toes until your elbow is at your toes. And your left hand is just up and free. You can keep your hand up and free, or reach your right hand around and grab it. And it's tempting to have that hand on the shin, I know. But obviously, if it's on the shin, there's nothing to grab. So it's just one extra little rotation. The shoulders are sensitive, though. So if it's not up for that rotation, don't do it. OK, and let's get out there. Oh, gosh. And try the other side. <laughs> All right, we made it to the other side. Left knee bends, right leg is back there. We're just going to hang out for a few breaths. Just getting used to this idea of Anjaneyasana. So basically, in Anjane, there's a straight line from knee to knee. Okay, let's hold the pinky toe side of the foot. So the palm is going to face up. The thumb is going to be on the sole of the foot. Your other fingers are going to be on the bony top part of your foot. If we were in a pigeon and we were taking it to a king pigeon, we would let this elbow rotate up. But for now, we're just going to see what this grip feels like in the shoulder. Not a boss. Okay, change it so you're holding the inside of the foot. It's still the same open chest scenario. And if it's appropriate, slide your toes to the elbow. Try to get your hands up. If your hand can come up, getting the connection is not quite so bad. But squaring up to the front of your mat, that is a whole nother thing. So those of you who are gripping the fingers, press your head into your left arm, try to square your ribs to the top of your mat, and then re-bend your front leg. Okay, oh Lordy, let's get out of there. And vinyasa. Right leg forward, pigeon. You decide how far away from your hip you put your right foot. We'll use our right hand to help us stay upright. So the right hand just poking into the floor or into your right leg. Let's do that same beginning of King Pigeon's grip just to see what it's like. So we're holding the edge of the foot. The thumb is on the sole of the foot. And it's like a little clamp. Okay, then change your grip so you're on the inside of your foot and attempt what you did before. Slide into the elbow, possibly right arm up and over. It will be quite different. So if you couldn't do it on the first thing when we were in that Andaneyasana, it does not mean you can't do it here. So Miss, yeah, Miss Tanya, you might be a little too much on the forearm with your toe. You have to get it more to the elbow. Yes. And then you just need longer fingers. Hey, now, there you go, the fingers grew. Okay, get out of there. And let's just find our front split. So rock to the right hip, straighten your right leg, and then center yourself again. Lots of weight in the hands so that you don't overdo your split. Sometimes it's nice to lift the back knee and just see how can you square up a little bit better. Oh, 
Okay, and let's press the downward dog so that we can do pigeon on the other side. Left leg in front. First, we play with what a king pigeon grip would feel like. So we'll clamp our hand on the outside edge of the foot. And I literally have to squeeze with the fingers, otherwise my foot would fly away. And one day when we do a king pigeon grip and into the full pose, you're gonna feel a lot in the shoulder. So we go very easy. Your thighs can handle more than your shoulders can handle. Okay, let's take it to the big toe side of the foot. You can stay like that or bring it to the elbow. Maybe both hands. And we run into the same predicament that we did in the Anjane, where it's hard to square up. If you can squeeze your thighs together more, your pelvis will rise away from the floor and then you can square yourself a little better. Very similar to in that split when we lifted the back knee, your pelvis rises and then you can square. Okay, let that go. And find your Hanumanasana, left leg in front. Interesting. Today, this is my easier side for split. This is never my easier side. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> the world has flipped upside down. Okay, let's meet in downward dog. Take your time getting there. Bring the feet together, left leg up high, inhale, bend the knee and flip it around into wild thing. And in this wild thing, instead of having the right leg straight, bend the knee, put the sole of the foot on the floor so that all 10 toes face the same direction and push your hips up really high. So the bottom half of your body is essentially in Urdhvadhanurasana. Push the hips higher, Reach with the left hand, look in the direction you're reaching, and then flip it around to your normal downward dog. Take a breath. So I just want us to feel in this pose that Urdhva Dhanurasana is really powered by the leg. Let's lift the right leg high, bend the knee, take the foot down behind you, and usually a wild thing, for, for that particular name pose, the left leg would be straight. But let's bend it, push, hips up. Reach with the hand, that right hand, and stretch with your chin even. Like your chin is trying to touch your right hand. Get the hips a little higher. Good. And then swivel around to downward dog. Okay, let's come through and lay on our backs. And we'll attempt Urdhva Dhanurasana. And I'm gonna spin the face this way so that I can see my computer while I'm upside down. Okay, so hands down and hips up. And remember much earlier I said that it's common in Urdhva Dhanurasana for people to have their hands too close together and then the elbows are too wide. So err on the side of having your hands too wide. Just see how it feels. Okay, and go on down. Very good. We're going to play with the legs just a smidge. So you did a whole lot of split type of stuff. So I'll show you on one side, then you can just join in. So just another point about the hand. When I start, I have my pinky finger dangling off the mat. 
because otherwise the shoulders get stuck for me. So once we're up, bring your knee in toward your chest, then extend the leg and breathe. And then we'll bring it down and try the other side. So bringing the knee in first, just gets it so that your thigh is pointing up to the ceiling. Yes, leaves the leg could be a little higher. Like aim it toward those pictures that look like little waves. Yes. Good. And make sure you try both sides before you get too tired. It's a lot of hamstring to get the legs straight up there. Point your toes. Yes. Now straighter, reach higher. Woo! Good. And come on down. I know it's tiring, but. It looks so pretty, which you know, that's the most important thing. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna attempt Vipari to Dandasana with that same leg thing that you just did, which actually the leg thing is gonna be easier in Vipari So you place your hands, come to the crown of the head, then creep your hands back so you wind up on your elbows. Your head could stay down, but eventually it will come up. And then this part, the leg part, is actually a little easier now than it was in Urdhva Dhanurasana. So give it a try. Of course, getting into this shoulder position is not easier. But dealing with the leg is. But keep pushing with your feet. Remember how in wild thing you pushed into your feet to get your hips up? Do that. Tanya, walk your hands a little closer to your heels. Then your elbows will come down with a little more force. Okay, good. So this next one, we're gonna attempt to interlace our fingers instead of have the hands flat. You might like it better and you might not. There's no way to know how you'll feel about it until you try it. So it starts the same. I'll come to the top of my head to give myself a little more room. I lift the heels and see how that now I can do this. I can wiggle a little more. If my heels are up, I have more wiggle room. So I roll toward the forehead and then I'll bring the elbows down. And they're not too wide, they're just kind of like next to my head, I can see them. Then I'll interlace my fingers. And now that my fingers are interlaced, I can push the edge of my hand into the floor and it helps get the chest through. And it feels pretty nice. So give it a whirl. If you attempt it and your hands just won't interlace, there's no movement, don't force it. We'll just try it again another day. All forcing it does is injure us and set us back. Oh, at least it took early Shavasana. <laughs> Flat on the ground. And even if you're choosing something like Sage Bandha Sarvangasana, the legs are working like mad, so there's no escape in a back bend. There's no way to escape your leg working. Okay. So, we will take it into a different path for a moment. We're gonna just go into a deeply bent um, Pinchamayarasana. And I just wanna show you uh, I don't know actually what it will look like, but it feels like a lot. So if I come up and I'm looking sort of between my forearms, hang on, got to get my ass up there, hang on, almost. Okay, so I'm looking between my forearms. To get this into a deeper back bend, I'm going to dip my chest and start to pull my chest forward. So now I'm looking 12 inches in front of my fingers. 
and um, so you stick your balance and then deepen your back bend a little bit. Give it a whirl. And if you put the wall behind you, it's really just your plan B so you don't wind up in deep reaches of asana. But you've done already a few of the full viparita. So if you fall into it, it's not so bad. Legs together, squeeze and reach up. Good. Good fight, Carol. You really don't like your legs to be together. <laughs> I'm noticing this. All right. So I uh, I don't feel confident with my wall to show you um, how to turn this into a full deep barita. So I'm going to fall over onto my mat. But I'll start in a headstand. And if I had a wall, I would go about two and a half feet from the wall. I would come up to my headstand. And I would reach my feet to the wall. And since if I had a wall, I wouldn't know exactly where it is. I would do something like this, find it, and then bring the second foot to the wall. Once both feet are on the wall, you'll be in a huge back bend. Since I don't have a wall, and maybe you guys as well want to try it this way, I'm going to roll toward my forehead, reach with my feet, and I'm going to land at the same time right and left foot. I'll let my head come up off the ground. And I'm trying to fight it a little bit by gravity, but there will be a moment that I can fight no more. And then I come down with a great thud. And we land where we were before. We'll give it a try, wall or no wall. If you are going to the wall with your feet, you have the choice of walking your feet further down the wall or just keeping them where they were. You'll be in a back bend regardless. Tanya, I think if you try that again, but let your head come up once your feet are on the wall, you'll have more, more movement. Yeah, it's scary when you don't know where the heck that wall is. So in a way, doing it without a wall is actually less scary because you know where the floor is. You got it, Tanya. You're only like four inches away. If you just um, let that top foot come a little bit lower and the bottom leg, just bend your knee more. The floor is so close, girl. So close. Yes. <laughs> Okay, good. So when you've had enough, just find your downward dog and rest there. Lift your armpits up, press your chest back. Let's stand on the knees for a moment. So we're just going to do this little thing to help us figure out how do we return to a straighter position when we're in a back bend. So let's just put our hands somewhere on the torso. You might want hips, you might want ribs. I'm kind of going to do both and just take up all the space I can with my hands. So we're going to keep our hips where they are. We're just going to lean our shoulders a little bit back so we're arched. And then return to where we started so that your shoulders are over your hips. And just do this a few times. And notice how when you lean back, your ribs poke up. And when you return to your neutral, you, it's basically a crunch. Just going from a back bend, you're bringing it all in again.
And when you're choosing to go back, you have to sort of release your abdominals a little bit in a controlled way. So you are always deciding what shape are you taking? So let's try to use that to our advantage when we go from a headstand into a Pinchamaya We're gonna go from Badahasta C, which is the one that your forearms are like train tracks, because that's the same shape that you would do in Pincha. So there's a few ways to do it, but yesterday I promised Carol we would go the easier of, of the ways. So we're just gonna start in the headstand. And if you've never done this with me, then just watch. And I'm going up one leg at a time because I feel super stiff. So, okay, here's the headstand. So I'm gonna roll a little toward my forehead and let the back start to arch. Then I'll start to pull with my fingers and graze the crown of my head toward my finger. Eventually the head is fully up and I look toward the fingers. So you're always deciding how much bend do you put in your back. So give it a try, it's great fun. But the hardest part is really the first few seconds when you have to go from the crown of your head headstand rolling toward your forehead because it's a weird thing that you like we've trained you with your headstands to stay straight so your hands have to be strong enough to let your head be off the ground a smidge carol that was pretty good but a little jerky but you did make it <laughs> So the transition from A to B is much harder than being in A or B. So if you want to try it again, try it again. Otherwise, choose to stay in headstand or to go to Pincha straight away and stay in Pincha. Carol does not get to choose. The rest of you get to choose. Keep your thumbs heavy. If you think of nothing else in this transition, think about your thumb. Tanya, reach your legs a little higher so that they're not quite uh, so tempted by that wall. A little more toward the ceiling and then look a little more toward your baseboard. Okay, so Carol's holding this pinch up for like an hour. So, <laughs> so I know it's so satisfying when you hold it and then all I do is throw at you. Okay, now you can hold it. So now you've got transition, you've got lotus legs, you've got all these other things. So um, this is part of why we have to just be happy where we are because there's never an end. Good. All right, let's meet in Baddha Panasana again, this time just C position, which is heel close to us and torso upright. So it's not a, it's not really a leaning forward one, which almost makes it harder. You might want to sit on something. Draw your belly in in case it wasn't already. I'm just reminding you, because I noticed mine was not, I was just hanging out. So belly in and reach forward without letting any slouch happen. Good. And stretch the legs out and fold forward, passion was enough. We'll rise up. I promised you one more lotus thing. We're going to place our right foot into a half lotus and the left foot either underneath the right knee or also in lotus. Or just cross your legs somehow. 
If you're in lotus, your feet are all the way up by your hip creases. So there's two inches of toe dangling. You're going to whip your left arm around your back and grab onto your foot. It's in your left foot, but it's on the right side of your body. You can do a little twist so that your grip gets a little more stable. But then you need a twist to the right and hook your right arm around your back to hold the other foot. So this does help you pull your lotus in a little tighter. If you're not in lotus, just hold opposite elbows and let's fold forward. And once you're folded, try to bring your mid back up into your forearms. In essence, you're giving yourself a little massage to make your forward bend easier. And there's a pose in second series right after Kapotasana where we get this forearm digging into the back kind of relief. And it helps ease you out of the, the stiffness that might be generated by deep back bend. Okay, let's rise up, release your legs, do any last thing you need before your Shavasana. I'm gonna do those little rocks that we did before. Whenever you're ready for Shavasana, make sure that you're comfortable. Ideally, you don't have to move or adjust for a few minutes.
few more breaths. With minimal effort, roll to the side, take a few breaths there. Minimal effort, sit up, keep the eyes closed. Minimal effort is sort of a theme throughout yoga, even when we're in a very hard pose. Say you're in pincha and trying to make your legs go into lotus. We try to stay calm. We sort of whip the legs together with as as little resistance as possible. And we try to make it easy feeling. The same is true when we're just walking our lives. Let's not fight so much. Maybe if something is requiring too much fight, it is not worth it. Bring the hands together, fold forward any amount. Namaste. Namaste.